Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. I have a lot to talk about today. Um, I have a lot of videos for you guys. There's going to be less of me talking and a whole lot of videos I'm going to be showing you throughout this week. So I got some events. I got some news items. But let's talk about some of the things that are happening in terms of weather and the smoke in the Missoula area. So currently, it is 50 degrees outside. You can expect those highs to be in the 84. So you can expect these nice days to last pretty much throughout the whole entire week. But better be careful because that smoke is coming back to the Missoula area. That rain really helped us on Sunday, but unfortunately, we're going to get some uh, moderate to unhealthy for sensitive groups later. Um, as uh, as we see, let's take a look at our graph of particular matter 2.5, which is basically the kind of uh, smoke and uh, harmful particulates that go in the air. Um, there's moderate and unhealthy levels, but right now we're at the moderate stage and it looks like it's going up. So uh, we've been basically mo low, moderate to uh, good in terms of the air quality. But as you can see right here, that the smoke is going to be returning to the Missoula area pretty soon. Um, so just be aware that it's, it's only going to get smoke here as the little fire does keep moving forward. But let's take a look at the fire map. So far, Sealy Lake is at its um, hazardous level so you may want to avoid going up anywhere near Sealy Lake. Um, you got clear water which is unhealthy for sensitive groups but pretty much there's moderate areas in uh, the Missoula, Frenchtown and Hamilton areas so uh, you, want, you might want to do uh, par partially uh, um, time outside into the smoke but of course um, Sunday really helped clear the air out we had the, probably like the best air quality uh, during the smoke season, um, just Monday. So today, we're back in the upswing of collecting more smoke in the Petri dish that is Missoula, because we live in an inversion. Anything that comes through kind of stays here in Missoula in the Valley of the Five Winds. So that's kind of what's happening with weather and smoke in the area. Let's talk about some of the fires that are happening. Lolo Peak Fire, it's uh, 10 miles south of Lolo. The size is 10,147 acres in its 0% containment. Rice Ridge Fire near Sealy Lake is at 11,000 acres and it's about 10% contained, so they're making some leeway, leeway on that one as well. Uh, Gallbreaker Ridge Fire, it's east of Eureka. It's at 1,938 acres. It's at 12% containment. Um, Sunrise Fire, 21,000 acres, 30% containment. Um, then you got uh, Burndet Fire in Tarkio. They are at uh, 649 acres, 70%. All, all sorts of other fires happening in Rock Creek, which is 30,000 um, acres um, at 42 percent, um, 5 percent for the uh, Phillipsburg Mayor's Fire. Um, Liberty Fire in, uh, up in Arley, it's at 90 percent containment, is at oh, about 5,000 fires. And then Tamarack Fire is 300 acres, and it doesn't show the current status of containment as well. So let's talk about news. Uh, and speaking of news, the fire is the news. The large plume and torches trees and readily visible in Highway 12 in the up in the Mill, Mill Creek drainage. But while the Lolo Peak fires movement triggered evacuation Sundays, it didn't blow up as expected Sunday night. Still, after a two mile run in about an hour Saturday night, fire managers remained concerned about possible unexpected moves and kept the evacuation order in place Monday for about 165 residents with another 140 homes on the evacuation warning. So that's basically kind of what's happening. They had a, a community meeting uh, Monday night. Uh, Livingston, uh, um, who is the uh, um, incident manager, Noel Livingston, he apologized for those forced out of their homes, saying that they understand the difficulties in being displaced and thanking them for their patience. And he told the crowd while, they, uh, while there was the fire sitting relatively quiet Monday compared to the big run Sunday night, that they aren't out of the woods by any means and its current sits at 10,000 acres with about f 500 personnel working on it. Um, in national news, um, other than uh, fires happening in Montana, um, uh, Donald Trump is once, in a, once again coming under fire as more and more uh, CEOs and people that are in his collective circle are cutting ties with Trump as um, basically um, there's Under Armour founder and CEO Kevin Plank set off a social media firestorm last February when he voiced some 
overly positive words about the new administration of Donald Trump. Um, on Monday, Plank became the latest corporate CEO to publicly cut ties with the president, giving up his seat in the White House Advisory Council on manufacturing amid criticism over the president's response to the violence in Charlottesville, Virginia, last week. If you haven't heard that there was a group of uh, people marching uh, White Lives Matter movement, um, in the South Carolina, uh, and then of course they came under scrutiny as anti-protesters came to the rally, uh, the University of Virginia uh, students and other folks alike uh, to display the, uh, basically uh, came to rally to stop the display of the far uh, right-winged intolerance. But of course within 24 hours, many of the groups escalated into shoving, name calling, and even some folks who started um, um, to rally brought uh, some semionic um, vehicles as well. It even escalated when a car rammed through a crowd of people, uh, injuring 19 and killing one person. But that, th from there, uh, uh, um, Plank said that there's no place for racism or discrimination in this world. Uh, that in his departure with the Donald Trump administration, um, Fa uh, faces a dilemma of corporate chief executives at a highly polarized and partition time, said David Ulrich, professor of business at the University of Michigan's Ross School of Business and a partner at the consult. Yeah, they uh, they may share Trump's pro-business agenda, but find it difficult to ignore his personal behavior, um, as David Ulrich says. Given Trump's tendency to hit back hard against anyone who crosses his, crosses him, such companies may be especially reluctant to anger the White House, um, and then. Yeah, so that's kind of what's happening in the world today. Um, I didn't get any state news because, hey, uh, there's a lot of fires going on. That's the, ba the big news that's happening in the state of Montana. Um, but let's move on. I got a bunch of new programs for you guys. Um, here are a bunch of new programs that are happening on MCAT. Uh, you can watch this anytime. It's on our video on demand on channel 189. You can look it up at MCAT.org, and I'll show you how to do that right after this. a good idea was let's invest in innovation, let's create economies instead of trying to integrate so many people into existing economies. Um, a lot of people when they, who know Israel, they uh, talk about the talent, you know, the density of talent and all that, and, and, and maybe I'll spend a few words about that later, but many of them think that this density of talent started in Israel somewhere in the 90s. And uh, 
if I was to ask the question, when did it start? The answer is not in the 90s. It, Israel always had that. Okay, we always had a high level or high percentage of engineers and doctors and professors. And we have at least two universities that were established in Israel even before the state was established, the Hebrew University and the Technion. But we were established in Israel. Israel was established as a socialist country. So the policies that were in place were not very uh, friendly to entrepreneurship, were not so friendly to privatization, to uh, what we call the startup culture, in a way. And when we started to change our policies, all this energy of talent was able to present itself. Now, here's so the biggest thing to me about all of it. Great years, we had a great big United States map on the south wall because the windows were on the north wall with good light. So when you look at a map for eight years on the south wall, the east is on your left. That does sound weird. Am I right? No. It's the other way. See, I'm confused right now. <laughs> hey guys, those are some of the new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. If you want to find out more information, you can go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your resource for everything Missoula in terms of video programming and other things that um, MCAT does. Um, I just uh, want to give a nice little shout out to our summer camps that we did this year. We did five summer camps and that helped a lot of kids um, get their uh, feet wet when it comes to video production and teach them a little thing about uh, vi basic video making and movie making and whatnot. So it's a nice little uh, thing that we did here. Um, once again, um, I just want to thank everyone at uh, KUFM for hosting us that day for this particular picture that they're providing us. But if you want to learn also more information about um, some of our new programs, you just click on 189 or 190. 189 is the public access side of the channel, the channel that you should be watching right now if you're not watching online on YouTube. Channel 189 is through Charter Cable in Montana. Um, channel 190 is our more of our civic channel, more of the uh, city council, all meetings and whatnot like that. But also, if you want to find more for inf information, you go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice. Moving on, let's talk about some, uh, we have a new dub and stuff for you guys. Um, and when we come back, we'll talk about some events that are happening in and around the Missoula area. So stay with me. I got a lot to talk about. And then I got a nice little highlight video from the uh, 2017 Western Montana State Fair. shot that kid. Alright, cross over now. Come on, double time. You got traffic. <laughs> yeah, man. That country was so yeah, sick. Sir. <laughs> right? Oh yeah. For oh sure. yeah, and then the and then all the lights nope. came on and everyone's and like, happened. no, man. Oh, oh, it was no. so crazy. Oh, God. Best country ever. Did you guys hear that Hoopa Stink will be playing next week? It's supposed to be totally ridiculous. It's gotta be like one of my favorite bands. We don't want to go see your Hoopasang concert. I beg your pardon? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Hoopasang. <laughs> well, geez, you almost got me there. Ooh, crack a walnut with that thing. Who is that? I was talking about someone else. Hey, how are you doing? Hello, what's your name? Well, uh, my name's, uh... Car kids getting in a car across the street? Uh, my friends call me Car. Oh, look at those kids hidden in the car across the street. Uh, no relation. You know what? You really do have a nice butt. Well, I got some Brazilian blood inside this thing. Have you ever gotten a blood transfusion from I did, a South American? Uh, oh, no, I, I guess I didn't get a transfusion from a Brazilian person. Oh, or is it South American American? Hmm, intolerant. Um, I, I, I just don't know the correct saying for this. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, too. I shouldn't mix ignorance with intolerance. Man, it's so difficult to give a compliment nowadays. Oh jeez, I hope she doesn't notice us. Oh, hi. Oh, hey there, boys. What's going on here? Uh, well, uh, this is, uh, uh, Reggie and Steve. Steve, Reggie, this is Sam. 
I've known Samantha for quite some time now. She's a good girl. Not too good, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really funny. But, yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah, uh, yeah, that was pretty funny. <clears throat> oh, bucket seats. <laughs> Whoa, dude, watch out. Hey, guys, have a good time, you two. Thank you very much. I found a reason for me. Yeah, I'm probably the only person who thinks I'm funny. <laughs> Moving on, let's talk about some of the things that are happening in and around the Missoula area. Starting for your Wednesday morning, you got open hours of the maker st uh, makerspace, and that's where you can do some 3D printing, some cool electronic stuff at the Missoula Public Library starting at 10 a.m. Astrobiology um, for some little kids. Um, so if you want to get your kids uh, a hyper genius level kind of education, Spectrum Discovery Center is the place for you, and they're doing astrobiology. Um, that starts at 11. So shaving cream art family's first children's museum let's make a mess starting at 11 a.m and it goes until 11 30 a.m um they, they also have many other cool areas that the kids can play and explore in uh, money penny at out to lunch they are going to be playing and children's activity is presented by traveler's rest it's sponsored by blackfoot missoula in motion missoula parking commission mountain lion out to lunch is a weekly concert series at the karis park on the clark fork river featuring musicians and over 20 varied food vendors um, easy Steps to eBooks is starting at the Missoula Public Library at 12.30 p.m., um, noon 30, as I like to call it. This class is an introduction and overview of eBooks uh, resources available at the library. So if you don't like books and you can't stop staring at your phone, you can use eBooks to basically do both. So that's what's happening there. And if you want to find out more information, you can call 721-BOOK. And this happens from 12.30 to 1.30 if you want to get a time scope on there. And this is going to be in the computer classroom at the Missoula Public Library. Middle School Writers Group is going to be at the Missoula Public Library. So let's say you're getting back into school and you want to brush up on some of your writing skills. Middle School Writers Group is the place for you. And it, it helps um, kids who are struggling with literature and issues with reading to kind of help catch up and kind of be ready for the high school years coming up before them. So that's happening from 3.30 to 5.30, um, 3.30 to 5, and there's chocolate available so for some kids if it, if uh, if reading isn't enough to entice you. Uh, Raising Voices, a civic action work party is happening at Imagination Brewing Company. Um, the, every week, uh, Jeremy Drake and Missoula Rises host a work party. They get together with letters, emails, and teach you how to use Twitter to tweet the members of Congress. They also hang out uh, and decompress, laugh, and maybe cry with fellow resistors. And who you know? Well, how can you not be into this? Um, bike and dock and talk. Free Cycles of Missoula is doing a talk from 8:30 to 10:30. Ride down to Free Cycles for a night of engagement, empowerment, and education. It's Climate Smart Free Cycles Local Indigenous Network Collective. Mist. Montana Conservation Voters, MUD, Home Resource, and Trout Unlimited for a collaborative event filled with short documentaries and discussion. Snack and beverages will be provided along with time and space for civic action. And then uh, um, it's basically that's what's happening. So it's the last, also tonight is the last, last, last promise Missoula City Band Concert Series and it's at Bonner Park Band Shell, um, hosted by Gary Gillette, who is former. Uh, um, director of bands at Sentinel High School will be hosting the Missoula City Band in this uh, event that will uh, feature the Shamrocks with a salute to the Thomas Marr. Thanks to the uh, Thomas Marr Bar for fin uh, financial support. It's curi And then of course, um, if you're interested in ki doing karaoke later tonight, Eagles Lodge, Ballander, and Sunrise Saloon is doing all that later tonight as well. Um, here is an art clip. This is a brand new art clip from Elizabeth Dove, and this is going to be artwork from the Missoula Art Museum. But don't take my word for it. Here's a little highlight, but you got to go down there for yourself because it's free expression, free admission. Thank you. 
Thanks to Eric Phillips for producing and making that little video to help highlight the arts. And also, it's a great archive to basically celebrate all the art that comes through the Missoula Art Museum, along with the many other art and artists that come through Missoula. Here is some of your Thursday um, events starting Thursday morning. Flamenco classes with Ulisa. Um, it's dance, song, and structure starting at 9 a.m. at the Rocky Mountain Ballet Theater. This is a thing that happens uh, during dance techniques meet and greet from 9.30 to 11.30. The song and flamenco structure taught by Jesse Montoya, Jason McGuire from 11.45 to 1. Guitar taught by Jason McGuire, El Rubio, and then later that night, 7 to 8.30, for more information about this amazing opportunity to take classes such as renowned artists, check out the website flamenco, uh, flamencomt.com or call Victoria at 406-542-9270. Register by class, email, or by phone. Duck Duck Goose is happening at the Adams Center. I'm assuming um, it's one of the Missoula's largest children's um, sale and this is from August 17th through the 19th and this is from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. and you can visit their website for more information on how you can make 70 to 80 percent of your total sales and save hundreds of dollars by shopping our huge selection of generally used clothes, shoes, toys, and more. This event will be um, last only three days so mark your calendars. It's going to be at the Adams Center starting at 10 a.m. and it will be going on throughout the weekend Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Stomp Rockets so actually Discovery Center, they're, they're, um, yeah, that's what it is. That's their, uh, they do a new event pretty much every single day that emphasizes one thing over another, and this one is called Stomp Rockets, which I'm assuming it's, uh, figures out how you use pressure to launch rockets in the air. So Meditation for Veterans at the Learning Center at Red Willow happening at 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, it's Meditation for Vets is a guide to, for mindfulness practice, exploring the method of paying attention to the to the breath to increase calm and reduce stress. No previous experience is necessary. Um, Caddis Fly Case Creations. Um, it happened at 3 p.m. in a Missoula Insectarium. Caddis flies are quite common in the streams and rivers of Missoula. If you can spot these little cl uh, clusters of small rock hanging onto the side of a bigger rock, chances are are uh, good for you. You found. Oh, sorry. The the grammar in here is really terrible. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, found a caddis fly. For th this fun activity, we'll be investigating these little guys and making models of the um, cases that they build on the rocks. Um, so Lego Club is at the happening at Missoula Public Library. This is going to be at the Dragon Drug in the children's area. So parents, you may want to wear some tough shoes because you might be stepping on Legos at the Missoula Public Library starting at 3.30 p.m. Farm party at the Peas Farm. So Peas Farm is uh, usually they have these parties towards the end of the year, at, towards the end of the summer. Um, uh, the Garden City Harvest for the uh, freshest par this party of the summer. They celebrate local food and farming with the farm fresh meals, drinks, and dancing. They have live music by Good Old Fashioned and Mudslide Charlie, and you can get ready for some 21st century blues and some old fashioned bluegrass folk. So basically, 21st century blues is basically they take modern music and then they bluegrass it. That's really not that great. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I'm biased about that. But some of you like it. I don't. Um, all <laughs> brews will be provided by Draft Works Brewery. UM Catering will pair up with the Peace Farm Summer School Program to, to, to prepare delicious meals. And uh, all food provided by is from the Peace Farm as well. I think so. So um, 9.30 to uh, 5.30 to 9 p.m. That's happening pretty much all day at the farm party. Um, letter B is going to be at downtown tonight. So if you guys want to check out that, there's two great activities that are happening in the Missoula area. Letter B is a um, jam band that will be playing all day um, from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. And it's children's activities by the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula. It's basically like out to lunch, but it's dinner and they have beer. Boom. Um, Mending Group at the Missoula Art Museum. Uh, for uh, mil for millennia, thread and a textile process have inspired metaphors for human connection. More recently, the slow fiber movement has emphasized ties uh, throughout uh, between thoughtful making and in the integrity of materials. Adults 17 are invited to bring their mending creative project um, projects and a cu curiosity for this informal, in non-instructional DIY um, gathering dedicated to community con um, conversation and creative reuse. Each month, ma'am, register. Virgin star and artist Jennifer Rain Snyder will bring a special textile artwork out of the collection vault to enrich the evening exchange. So if you're interested in um, mending, this is the group for you at the Missouri Art Museum. And um, I think one of the uh, people in this group also has an ex exhibit that's happening at the Missouri Art Museum. Let's see. And you can gather on third Thursdays 
um, May 18th, June um, 15th, July, and then of course this is, it looks like it's the last thing. This is the last kind of group meeting that gonna, you're going to be doing at the Missouri Art Museum, and it happens from 6:30 to 7:30 p.m. But guys, Slayer's coming to town, so. It, uh, a Lamb of God and Behemoth is going to be at Kettle Health Amphitheater. So if you're interested in that rock music, they all rock music, which is basically now for like 40 plus year olds at this point, because people who listen to these bands are usually around those age because, you know, they're really big when they first came out in those eras. And then everyone else who's younger is, are the ones who kind of came aboard because they're the children of Slayer. So anyways, Old Sap is also going to be at Draftwork Brewing Company at 8, 6 p.m. Flamenco guitar classes. I already told you about that. Um, country dance lessons with instructor Kathy Clark. That's happening pretty much weekly at the Sunrise Saloon, uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Live jazz of the plonk. Dusk at the Sunrise Saloon. Rocking karaoke at Dark Horse and karaoke by Kaleidoscope at VFW Bar. So those are some of the events that are happening in and around the Missoula area. Right now, I got some of the highlights of some of the things that you missed from the Missoula County, uh, from the Western Montana County Fair at the Missoula County Fairground. So I'll give you a little highlight of that. And then when I return, I'll give you my final thoughts on um, what you guys can expect throughout this week and at MCAT. <laughs> necessarily about mental stress. I think it's more about like a physical stress. I don't personally feel it, but um, we're going to take care of that.
but it doesn't matter. It's like <laughs> the fair is just like, you know, one day of rain has well, to happen. I've heard rain can be lucky, so. But, we um, really need it too because of the smoke. No. And the Demolition Derby is later today, mm -hmm. um, so we're going to be uh, covering a little bit of, the, of, of that. The first female thing is here tonight. Yeah, that last song um, that was playing reminded me of From Dust Till Dawn at the, you know, like the end credit scenes. Anyways, um, that was the Western Montana State Fair. Um, it happens every year from Tuesday through Sunday, pretty much either the first uh, first official full, like the first full week of August. So if uh, August starts on a Tuesday, then they will start August 1st, but it didn't start on a Tuesday. It actually start, wait, wait, did it? No, August 1st did start on a Tuesday, so actually... Forget what I just said. It was a great fair. Uh, we got a lot, as much stuff as we could possibly get. Um, one of the things that we could not uh, do is be at multiple places at once throughout the entire fair. We did bypass Friday because the smoke was so bad. Friday and Friday night, it got as high as 118 particulate matter in the air, which is uh, basically it's still below hazardous but it's still at the appropriate level of very unhealthy <laughs> so that was kind of like a little highlight of the fair um I want to thank um, Emily Bentley, the uh, developing director of the Missoula County Fairgrounds, and they're also implementing new ways to improve the fair. So if you are interested in getting involved or actually giving your two cents on what you want the fair to do in the future, um, most people were just like, where are the horse races? Where are the horse races? Where are the horse races? And I remember I gave another quick little highlight video on Friday of the fair, and many of the people who commented on that video on our Facebook page at MCAT, um, Missoula's Community Media Resource, was about the horses. So so instead of um, complaining about what's missing, maybe you guys should complain about what the fair should have and what should gain so that it would bring people there. So there's always one thing that brings people to the fair, whether that be the crappy food, uh, the uh, the animals. Uh, a lot of people go there for the 4-H, and over 200 uh, animals were sold um, by the kids who brought it through 4-H and FFA. That was great. It was awesome. There are a lot of animals there, and I'm glad that a lot of the kids got a, a – uh, basically raise their own um, cattle or um, sheep and bovine and basically bovine kind of encompasses everything so anyways they uh, got it they were able to sell a good chunk of their uh, commercial uh, market cattle as they call it so um, you'll be able to see the full version of this it's about two hours long which kind of encompasses everything about the fair which makes the fair the fair so we'll have that on MCAT pretty soon I hope so uh, I want to thank everyone for joining me this morning. Um, there wasn't much to talk about. I did. Uh, I, I watched City Council from the night before, but the most interesting thing, basically, I already talked about last Friday, was when Tom Benson came down and talked a little bit about the um, arts and nonprofits and how they boost the um, Missoula economy, not directly, but parallel, kind of like the cereal and the milk um, um, metaphor. So anyways, um, so that's basically what I had to say. Um, thanks for joining me. And you want to if you want to find out more information, you can subscribe to me on YouTube. Like me on Facebook and follow me on the Twitter, as uh, I like to call it. You can also go to MCAT.org to find out everything and find these programs and more uh, by logging on to that website. Oops. 
That's the website. My bad. Um, I didn't mean to do that. So uh, once again, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all these links are on my wakeupmissoula.wikisite.com slash wakeupmissoula. And you can find all that and more. So thanks for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thank you.